In this video, we're going to have a look at how to determine the gradient of a line segment. The gradient or slope measures the steepness and direction of a line or line segment. We already had a look at this when we did graphs and the straight line, and here you learned that the gradient symbol is an M. To calculate the gradient, we determine the ratio between the change in Y values and the change in X values which means we calculate the vertical change over the horizontal change. And to get these changes, we need to determine the difference between the two y values and the difference between the two x values. And that is why we can use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we wanted to make use of the formula to determine the gradient of our given line, we would start with the y value of 5 and subtract the y value of minus 1 divided by the x value of 4 minus the x value of 1 and this will give us 6 over 3 which simplified gives us a gradient of 2. Earlier I mentioned that the gradient indicates the steepness and direction of the line. So the plus 2 or positive value indicates that this line is increasing or moving up from left to right. And then the 2 tells us that for every 1 we move in the positive x direction, you have to move up to in the positive y direction. Here we have line segments AB and CD. And even before calculating their gradients, you should be able to say that AB is moving downwards from left to right and should have a negative gradient, while CD is moving up from left to right, increasing, giving it a positive gradient. So now let's make use of the formula for gradient to determine the gradient of line segment AB. I'm going to choose to make point A my coordinate 1 and B my coordinate 2, but it doesn't make a difference which one you substitute first. I'm going to start substituting the y value of point B and then subtract the y value of point A. Therefore, I also need to start with the x value of point B and subtract that of point A. So the gradient of line segment AB is minus 4 over 5. This means that for every 5 units we move in the positive x direction, we need to move 4 units down to form this specific line. And now I'm going to use the formula again to determine the gradient of CD. Here I'm going to start by substituting the y value of D and subtracting that of C. And therefore I'm going to use the x value of D first and subtract that of C. This will give me a gradient of 4 over 6, which can be simplified to 2 over 3. Next up we have a line EBC, which is parallel to the y-axis. This is clear because all the points on this line have the same x value. So using the formula again, I'm going to determine the gradient of line EC by using points E and C. This means I will substitute 2 and subtract minus 2 and divide that by 1 minus 1. Simplifying this will give me a denominator of 0 and that means the gradient is undefined. And focusing on graphs, we also then said that a vertical line has the equation x is equal to, and in this case equals 1, and it's not in the standard form of y is equal to mx plus c anymore, because m, the gradient, is undefined. Next up we have a line that is parallel to the x-axis, because line ED's y value stays constant. So for the gradient of line ED, we can substitute and say 2 minus 2 over 1 minus 7. This will give us 0 over minus 6, and that, of course, is a gradient of 0. 
So any horizontal line has a gradient of zero. So to sum up, we've had a look at four different types of gradients. Firstly, for an increasing line moving up to the right, the gradient is positive. A decreasing line will always have a negative gradient and a horizontal line will have a gradient of zero. The gradient of a vertical line is undefined. In the next video, we'll have a look at how the gradients of different lines can help us to make a conclusion about the properties of those lines.